The recent beta release of Bricks 2.0 RC2, which is kind of close to the final release, has released a few updates and changes and enhancements to the command palette, which was introduced quite recently. I think these are kind of noteworthy because I think these will dramatically speed up how you work once you embrace working with the command palette. So let me just quickly show you the command palette is. If we use the command and K key on the keyboard, you'll see this opens up the command palette. So the command part allows us to kind of jump around and do various different things. Now we've seen how the basics of this work, so this will be a very quick TLDR before we jump on to the kind of new features that have been added. But you can see each of these sections, the builder, the post type, and the elements, each has a little keyboard shortcut afterwards. So you've got the hashtag, you've got the forward slash, and you've got the plus. So for example, if you want to jump over to the elements, we just press the plus. Want to go over to your post types, forward slash, you can see it kind of moves to those things. Then inside there depends upon what we've got selected. We might have subsections of various other things we can do. So for example, you can see we've got all templates in bricks, posts and pages. So for example, only want to look at the templates in bricks, press one, that will show us what we've got inside there. Want to go to your pages, press three, it'll take you over to there. And as you can see, you've got these various different options then. So you've got duplicate, edit with bricks, edit with WordPress and view on the front end. So quick ways in which we can access those various different things we may want to do. Nice thing is with a lot of these options, they will open up a new tab. Therefore, you keep your original tab open as well. So you can easily jump back and forth. Today though, what I'm mostly interested in is the elements section. So if we jump over to that, you see it tells us we can insert elements in an Emmet-like syntax. Now, if you've never used Emmet, this is kind of like a markup language or kind of a shortcut language that allows you to do various different things. In this case, we can create structures, we can insert various elements, and we can kind of create those structures with elements inside simply by using some short code. Plus, we can also supercharge that without having to go through a repetitive process. So let me first show you how this kind of Emmet language works, and then we'll move on and expand this. So for example, let's say we want to add a section with a container in. We can simply use the at symbol, type in section, and hit enter or insert. We've now inserted a section with a container inside it, because by default, a section includes a container. So that's pretty nifty, quite cool. Let's say you wanted to add two more of those in. Well, we can expand this now by just putting a multiplier. So we put multiply two. Again, insert, we now have two sections, each with their own container inside. So by itself, that's pretty nifty. Let's close this down and get rid of these a second. Open it back up, so Command and K to open it back up. You'll also notice now that we left off inside the Elements section, and that's exactly where we've come back to. We haven't jumped back into the Builder, and then we have to keyboard shortcut over to the Elements. This is now saved inside local storage on your browser. So you know, once you open this back up, where you left off is exactly where you're gonna carry on from. So let's take a look now at how we can expand things. So we'll do the section again. So we'll do at section, but we wanna put something inside you. We wanna create a kind of structure. So we'll use the is greater than, and now you see that opens up a second lot of options, which will show us those elements again. So now we can do the same thing. So we can do at, I would say what we want. So for example, we want to put inside here a heading. Cool. Now we want to add something else in. So we'll use the plus and we'll say, so what we're basically saying here is add a section in and inside that section, using the greater than symbol, add a heading. And there we go, there's our text. So we can hit enter. So now we can do plus again. And let's say we want to put a button in. Use the add symbol and type in button. So now we've created this structure. Now for ease, I'm simply gonna copy this and I'll come back to the reason why in a moment. So now let's insert this. And now if we close it down, we've got a section with a container with heading, rich text and button inside. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, Paul, but this isn't really that different to kind of creating a section and then saving that section as a template. We could do the same thing here. I would argue the main difference here is that with a section, Inside a template, you're probably going to apply some styling and set everything up. That's kind of where a template starts to shine. You can have everything created for you. However, with this, this is basically the bare bones structure of it. And no styling will be applied over what you may have set up inside your theme styles. So, for example, if you're using something like Core Framework or Advanced Themers Framework, Nothing will be applied to this because we haven't applied any classes to it. Whereas generally inside a template, you would apply those classes so you carry over the styling. So consider this kind of like a bare bones way of working over what a template 
will do, which will kind of give you what you have, including the styling, if you set it up that way. Obviously, you don't have to, but this is quite a nice, simple way of working. Okay, so we've seen how this is added in. Let's again get rid of everything here. Open up the command palette again. So I'm going to simply paste in what I've just created, but I'm going to just say, well, let's add in two sections. So we'll do start two. And now we could easily go and click on insert. But you'll notice we also have a save option. If we click save, we can now give this a name. We'll see this is our basic card structure, so we'll save it as that. Hit save. And now we've got a new option that says select element structure. Now if we click on this, click on basic card, and click insert, we now have exactly what we've set up inside there. So now we have our sections with our container, with our various different elements inside there. And if we open the command palette up again, you can see there's our structure. We could add another two in if we wanted to. Click Insert, and we keep on doing this. And you can create a whole library of these various different sort of setups. Kind of consider these like the wireframe with no styling, nothing applied to it. It's just basic element structure. You could use this to do it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about working with this kind of Emmet structure, I'll link to the article that gives you information about it so you can see a little bit more. But if we scroll down, you can see we've covered off most of it. The different operators we're going to use, the at symbol basically says what element is going to be used, the greater than to nest it inside, so the section has these elements nested inside there, your headings and so on. Your plus inserts it into that sibling. In other words, it puts it inside the container in this example. And how often do you want to insert this element? So like we saw, we can insert the section twice and everything else inside it will be duplicated as well. So you get the idea of how this all works. This isn't what I would consider to be a game changer when it comes to bricks, but what I think it will do is, especially if you're the kind of person that likes working on a keyboard, this can ultimately speed up the process of putting together your designs, inserting content, moving around the editor and the builder and those kinds of things. So I think the command palette, as it is right now, is much improved over what we saw previously. And hopefully this will be expanded to make it an integral part of the overall design process and the development process inside Bricks Builder. But what are your thoughts? Do you think this is a useful way of working? Do you like this kind of new Emmet kind of short code structure, which we can create simple structures, save those out as little templates, and just easily insert those where and where and we want to. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.